Each year, the PSAC Stars and Spurs Organizing Committee recognizes somebody as an honorary patron. The criteria include service to Canada's energy industry, the service supply and manufacturing sectors serving Canadian energy, and service to STARS. This year's recipient has many accomplishments, and I will highlight a few. However, his contribution arguably fits this criteria as much or more than any recipient before him. During his active career as a Canadian political leader, this person prioritized creating an economic environment conducive to stimulating private investment and employment as the base from which sustainable social programs are built. As the 14th Premier of Saskatchewan, Gradwall led at the same time an unprecedented expansion of private investment, broad economic growth that followed, increased levels of employment, a 15% population growth, and improved outcomes in medical care. No wonder he was elected Premier with three majorities and was considered the most popular Premier in Canada during his over 10 years service as Premier of Saskatchewan. In his very relatable Canadian way, Premier Wall communicated the positive benefits of oil and gas development not only on his home community of Swift Current and across Saskatchewan, but also across the country. After recognizing the gaps that had appeared in medical services in rural parts of Saskatchewan, Premier Wall was instrumental in bringing STARS to Saskatchewan in 2011. In active political retirement, Brad continues to make a positive impact on our industry. His voice in public speaking engagements, private meetings, media interviews, and direct Twitter continues to share the message about the essential role played by Canadian oil and gas, including through the value of its service, supply, and manufacturing sectors. In continuation of his commitment to medical outcomes equal regardless of where you are, he serves as chair of the STARS Capital Campaign. I've known Brad since our days together in Sask Hall at the University of Saskatchewan, and I'm pleased to be the chair of the PSAC Stars and Spurs Gala Organizing Committee that is awarding former Saskatchewan Premier Brad Wall as the 2021 PSAC Stars and Spurs Honorary Patron Award recipient. In keeping with doing things a little different this year, we're foregoing formal speeches with a more informal Q&A. I hope this works for you, Brad. Looking back at all you've accomplished so far, what is it that got you interested in STARS in the first place? Well, before I answer the question, let me just say thank you very much uh, for the designation uh, tonight. Thanks as well to the gala, to the volunteers, to all of the sponsors that uh, make this event possible each and every year. We all know the importance it plays in terms of making sure STARS stays in the air uh, and on the ground, saving lives in Western Canada. So um, let me just say, Dave, thanks for that. It's great to see you again. Uh, you haven't aged. I think I probably have. You look pretty much the same as you did in Sask Hall. Um, and uh, it's just good to be with you, uh, see you again, and to be with you here today, even if it has to be over Zoom. It is the way it is for a while longer anyway, but I think hope is on the way, and, and that's a good thing, too. Um, you know, the story background around STARS for Saskatchewan, of course, it, it, it was in Alberta. And I remember we were in opposition. I was leader of the opposition. We were working very hard uh, on our policy. Uh, we wanted to do more than just oppose the government. That, of course, is the tradition of the, uh, of the parliamentary, uh, especially a, a parliamentary monarchy style of government. You have an official opposition, loyal to the queen or the crown, but not so loyal to the government. But we were trying uh, to be ready for the day, if, if it ever came, uh, that we were asked to form the government by Her Majesty's representative. And we wanted policies, obviously, to be able to offer uh, in the campaign prior to that event ever happening, if it did, and then uh, and then if we were lucky enough to to form government. And so um, I remember our health critic at the time, a fellow by the name of Rod Ganifor, who's no stranger to stars, because after his time in politics as, as our finance minister, when he re retired from politics, he played a leadership role in stars. His connection, though, to stars was, uh, predates that by, well, by a, almost a decade, because he was the health critic for us in opposition. And he came to Alberta and met with um, those that were operating the system. We were aware in our province that in the 90s, a lot of rural healthcare facilities were closed. Um, 
And so as good as the road ambulance system is, and it is very good, and as good as the fixed wing ambulance system is in Saskatchewan, and it is very good, there were, I think, gaps, especially emergency service gaps. And Rod came back and reported that maybe this was a way, STARS was a way to fill that gap uh, in Saskatchewan, were we ever uh, given the chance to form government. And we took a bit of a different approach. We wanted to, as, as we, we were elected in 2007, late 2007, and began to work on the plan uh, of keeping our promises, including the one that we're talking about right now. Uh, and so uh, we identified funding. We wanted to make sure it's, it made sense for STARS to be here. Uh, we knew they were a uh, basic non-government entity, not-for-profit entity. And so different from Alberta, uh, we actually uh, provided some, some funding uh, on a regular, and committed to do so on a regular basis because we wanted it. I thought, you know, if we can't provide people emergency health care, ambulance care, well, STARS is much more than that, of course. But if we can't do that because facilities have closed in rural Saskatchewan, let's land this amazing uh, craft at their farm gate uh, or at a nearby highway. Uh, and if need be, have, have inside that helicopter the very best uh, city, uh, uh, you know, bigger city uh, uh, ER docs uh, and nurses ready to provide care. And so, I've, you know, that's a long, long answer, Dave, but you probably remember from Sask Hall that I, that's what I do, and that part hasn't changed, uh, except this is a very a, a good story. One that I'm proud that our government had a chance to play a, a role in STARS coming to Saskatchewan. And, of course, it was embraced then by the province uh, in terms of fundraising and all the good work that STARS does to complement whatever amount the uh, province of Saskatchewan gives in funding. And um, it's been a good partnership, and, and lives have been saved. Um, Literally, lives have been saved. We know that. Uh, were it not for stars, some wonderful Saskatchewan people would not be with us today. And and from from the uh, personal perspective, what has your relationship with stars given to you? Well, I get to. I have had several occasions to go out either to the hangar in Regina or since then in my work with uh, with the, with the group that Andrea has put together on fleet replacement, just to meet the people behind Stars. I knew some of them, uh, but I've had a chance as a result of that to meet the people that are providing that care and that emergency response, uh, and so that's a huge highlight. Um, but an even uh, an even bigger highlight, though, Dave, is to meet and talk to people that have, whose lives have been saved by STARS. I remember at a lead, we, do it, we did an annual leaders dinner in Saskatchewan and, and premier's dinner, they called it. And that's still the case I know with Premier Mo. And I remember on one occasion, we were able to highlight the story of a woman in Southeast Saskatchewan who had a terrible ATV accident. And, um, and she was, uh, we were able to talk, she gave us permission to tell her story uh, and um, there's many like it, but I I remember having a hard time getting through the story. I mean, it's a, it's a you know there it's my job to give the speech, uh, and it was hard to get through that part, uh, and not because of uh, anything the government had done, but because of what the women and men of this team uh, that is stars had done to save this wife and mom, uh, and uh, it's a powerful thing. And so you've understood that, and the association has understood that for a long time. And you've done these fundraisers as a result. And God bless you for doing it because that at the other end of the, this equation uh, is, uh, are literally lives that hang in the balance. And uh, I can't think of something more worthy or compelling than that to involve ourselves in either if we're involved in government or just volunteering or raising money or buying calendars or lottery, tic lottery tickets or whatever it might be. Yeah, it's, it's fantastic. Uh, the growth story of STARS starting in one province, but now reaches uh, across from, from Manitoba in the east, through Saskatchewan, Alberta, and, uh, and the east part of British Columbia. And, and that's why it's such a perfect alignment as something that the Petroleum Services Association of Canada uh, reaches, because this is where the majority of the drilling activity occurs. And it's great to have stars in, in all of the communities where we operate. What role did, the, did Canada's energy industry play in the economic success you experienced leading Saskatchewan? Well, they played a huge role. Long before I was in that job, uh, the oil and gas sector was playing a big role uh, in Saskatchewan. Less gas, obviously, but uh, the oil sector in particular. Um, you know, and, and I, in my speeches, when I would uh, be outside the province telling people about Saskatchewan, whether they were international trips or just across the country, 
uh, you know, I'd run down the list of things that make Saskatchewan awesome. And David's a very long list, as you know. Uh, and what well, included in that list, of course, is our great oil industry. Uh, the fact that at any given moment in, uh, in the life of our government during those 10 years, uh, we were responsible for exporting more oil to the United States than Kuwait. And I think that surprised a lot of people as you got out of Saskatchewan, because I think they, 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 those numbers were, we all know who's in first place in terms of oil production in Canada as a province, it was Alberta. Uh, and I maybe, maybe some people knew intuitively that maybe second place was Saskatchewan, but the amount of the volume is great. So what does that mean for us? Well, it doesn't just mean that the jobs related to production. It doesn't just mean the royalties that have helped fund uh, the coffers of government to, to, to build roads and schools and hospitals, to keep taxes low on families, if you, if you think about it that way. It, it hasn't been just the, uh, those sort of direct impacts of the revenue side of oil uh, uh, exploration and production. It's been the jobs that have been created, the communities that are better in that big L where we'll find our that oil in Saskatchewan, the communities that are supported and thrive because they get supported by not just the companies, the oil companies themselves, but, but the PSAC members. And remember, you know, for, for me, I've got a soft spot for, for you, this association because in Saskatchewan, you know, we, uh, we don't have a lot of head offices for oil companies. Um, and, um, but, but where we have a, a strong presence, where there are a lot of people working in Saskatchewan and then buying a home in Saskatchewan and enrolling their kids in school in our province and contributing, those families contributing to our communities is in the service, on the service side of things. And we've got some real leaders in that respect uh, that have uh, basically our Saskatchewan grown success stories. So it means so much, the sector does. Uh, you know, in, in my last, in our last budget that I had a part in, 2017, I, I still call it the Buckley's Mixture Budget because it was, it tasted awful, but I, I think, you know, it, it was, it was going to work. And uh, if we stuck to a, the longer term plan that it prescribed and Premier Mo didn't just stick to it, he's improved the plan. But the reason I would call it that is that because it proposed some tax changes, we wanted to move away from a dependence on that, uh, on, on non-renewable resources for revenue because of the cyclical nature uh, of it and uh, and get to, to to a more sort of stable uh, revenue source. We also had to make some cuts because we wanted to get back to balance within a couple of years. Again, credit Premier Mo for sticking to that plan and he did just that. It was prior to the pandemic, and he, but they balanced. It helped uh, secure a AAA credit rating, the first ever for the province. But I raised that budget because as, as important as the oil and gas sector has been in Saskatchewan from a revenue standpoint, I do think it's important for governments that happen to be blessed for jurisdictions that are blessed with a lot of oil and gas to, to, to reduce the dependence on that resource because of the cyclical nature for the very reasons that I've just mentioned. Uh, and so uh, it, it gives you a chance to maybe put a little away when times are good and and not be and not be quite uh, so pinched when times are when the price of oil is down, and so uh, the the dependency on on um, non renewable resources for revenue in Saskatchewan today is at its at a very very low level, and I think that's going to help uh, the province to, to come out of uh, the the pandemic uh, with a recovery that's particularly strong. Um, so you know I think it's important to recognize the revenue of oil, but not let it be part sort of hardwired in almost like an annual budget item for governments that have a lot of oil and gas. It's also very important for us to recognize the women and men that make up the industry, the jobs that are created and community causes that are supported. And uh, so it's been, uh, it's, it's huge for Saskatchewan. And I have been proud to stand up where I could in defense of the industry, which ought not to be defend, which ought not to, uh, to need to be defended in a country that is home to a third of the world's oil reserves and has a sector that has been, I think, more responsible and sustainable in their approach to developing oil than anywhere else on the planet. We have not to apologize, have to defend it, but it seems likely we do. And so to the extent our government could lend an effort and a hand and a voice to the defense of the sector, um, we were, you know, it was an honor to do that. And I know the government in Saskatchewan does, uh, continues to take those stands. Well, fantastic work and, and no doubt today, we see challenging times almost like no other. At, at this time in your life, what advice do you have for Canada's oil and gas industry and, and those, 
those hardworking people that you mentioned that are so essential to this industry? Well, I don't know if I have any good advice or not. I would offer a few thoughts though, Dave, and that would be just this, that I think the sector and even the provincial governments, I would include mine, um, that, that, are, that are home to, to the oil and gas sector in our country, underestimated the power of these NGOs, many of them foreign funded, all of that's true. All that work that people have heard the rumors around that are true. Uh, have been, I think we underestimated how effective they would be. Uh, if you sat down with a bunch of Canadian oil executives today, let's say, let's say we all were able to get into a specially equipped DeLorean and go back 15 or 20 years and sit down and meet with both conventional and oil sand executives and, um, and share with them the, this notion, this possibility that 20 years hence, uh, the, uh, the uh, Canadian oil would have a worse brand than uh, North California oil, the dirtiest in the world, or Venezuelan oil, or pick a Middle Eastern country, that it would have a, that, that our brand would be worse than theirs, or at least as, as bad. I, I think none of them would have believed it. And so maybe we were all uh, caught a little flat-footed uh, and uh, uh, weren't able to react as quickly as we otherwise should have. That doesn't mean that we can't uh, play a little catch up or that we shouldn't play a little catch up. I think we should. Um, you know, I'm, uh, if we've got some great stories to tell, and we do in our sector, whether it's carbon capture and sequestration after enhanced oil recovery, or whether it's just best practices, whether it's uh, methane, whether it's about other emissions that we're, we're working on uh, effectively as a sector, more so than others around the world, let's tell those stories. Uh, and in an unabashed way, let's tell them with some pride. Let's remind people on the economic development side, on the great contribution the sector is making, on the social services the sector helps to fund, on the transfer payments the sector has helped to fund. Let's remind them on all those things, fiscal and economic. But let's go. Let's be bold about our environmental record as well. Not just the uh, what I'll call sort of the carbon footprint of the sector, but the overall environmental footprint of the oil and gas of the Canadian oil and gas sector. So I would encourage us not to be too uh, fatalistic about what's happened over the last 15 years and how Canadian oil perhaps has been successfully branded by, the, by these groups. Um, let's pick up a sword and a shield and, uh, and make, our, make the case. Um, I, I think that is important. I've seen examples of it here recently with, with internet-based groups, um, uh, whether it's a Canada Action or some of these groups that have the, a lot of their center in Calgary that have turned heads and gotten attention for, uh, for, from people that would otherwise have believed everything that's said about our s sector that vilifies it. And, uh, and so it's worth that effort. That would be my advice to, uh, to Canadian oil and gas. And also, I, I mean, here's, a, here's a, maybe a bit of a different way to look at the Biden election. I mean, I think our sector has been focused on his commitment to try to, uh, to, try to withdraw presidential approval for uh, for KXL, for the pipeline, and you know, we've always thought, well, that's not going to be very good for the energy sector. Let's remember this. Uh, his party, uh, and he affirmed it in a, in a presidential debate, have made some commitments to sort of phase that their energy, oil and gas sector out. Uh, and, and as the president, he doesn't need the Congress to do that. He can use the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. He can use the Department of Energy or other regulatory tools the president has. If he keeps that promise, uh, this will not be good for our friends across the border, and we don't wish that on anyone, and I'm not wishing that on anyone, but is there a potential benefit for our sector? We've seen a lot of Canadian investment actually go to the Permian, and we maybe get some of that back uh, as, as we've seen um, some strengthening in price and perhaps a change in the policy standard uh, and uh, posture of the U.S. administration. Um, you know, Trump had a different approach. He wanted energy independence and their policies really, uh, I think, paved the way for a lot of the investment attraction and growth down there. And if that changes, let's be ready for that. Let's be ready to take advantage of that opportunity in Canada. Well, thank you for those uh, inspiring words. What does being named honorary patron mean to you? Well, it's got, it is a great honor. I mean, I don't know if I deserve it. I, I, um, I really don't. I mean, I happen to have the honor of uh, leading a government that had uh, promised to bring stars to Saskatchewan, and we simply kept that promise. Um, 
and it was Rod Ganifor that did the you know did the heavy lifting and work as we've already talked about here today uh, to uh, to identify stars and, and as an opportunity to to include in our own collection platform and our own plan for healthcare where we ever to be elected. So Rod did all that work, and then you had uh, uh, Minister Don McMorris, the health minister at the time, who, who sort of got the plan going, put the plan in place. All the ministry officials that were involved at that time, we had health regions, they were all involved. Uh, and then you have all the volunteers that do all the fundraising. Uh, and so I don't know, maybe I'll, it, I'll feel a little less guilty if I just accept it on behalf of all of those folks, uh, because they did, uh, they did all, they have done the work. I just happened to be, uh, you know, in a, in the job I was in at the time. Uh, but I, I also do hope it, um, that we can use the occasion to highlight the importance of the ongoing operating funding needs of STARS and our fleet replacement uh, effort. Our program to replace, to replace the fleet has, has gone very well. But this organization is so very well led. I guess I'm, I'm honored to be a part of uh, an organization Andrea has done uh, and continues to do an amazing job and her team. I need to underscore that. Uh, and so it's been a pleasure to work on that fleet replacement um, effort as well. And I encourage people uh, people that are tuning in to support this uh, to the fullest extent they possibly can. And then also if they, if, if, if they can, uh, if there's a little bit more room, a little bit more paint than fence, uh, they could remember the uh, fleet replacement program as well. Excellent. Uh, six bases, 300 people. STARS uh, is known in every community and with every person that they've had an impact on but they are truly an organization that reaches uh, potentially every person in, in Western Canada. And so it, it's something that is really important to, to you. I, I, I appreciate that uh, and all of your words. A mark of real, true leadership is, is sharing, the, uh, sharing the success and appreciate that. What would you say to, to those that are, that are watching and, and why, why they should support STARS? Well, for the reasons that we've talked about. I mean, here's, you, you can support an organization. Uh, the women and men of STARS are saving lives every day. Uh, and I, that's, pre that's, the, uh, that's a pretty good pitch. That's pretty powerful. It should be for, for all of us. Uh, and STARS that does it in a way that, you know, you know sort of all, um, all household budgets can afford a bit of help. Uh, they, they, they break it down. You can make many different donations and those are great. We welcome those, but there's so many different ways to, to help out and all ages can get involved. All, you know, all walks of life can get involved and support it. And, they, and, and again, when they do, whether they can give a, a offer a tuning or something much, a big, a big gift than that, uh, they are helping a group uh, save lives. And you know, what I've always appreciated about STARS that doesn't get talked about maybe enough is that it's pretty lean in terms of administration. I think that you and I always, I think, and folks that will tune into this uh, are, are, are hopeful that the, the causes to which we donate, organizations that we support are as lean as possible on the admin side and getting as much of the dollars to the front line of whatever the cause might be. Um, and uh, in STARS, you have a, 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 a remarkable story to that end. You have uh, a history of that, uh, and it's only being, that legacy is only being strengthened by Andrea and her team uh, by, and the volunteers to make sure that uh, the dollars that we raise are, get to that front line, uh, get to that emergency care. Uh, and um, I think that's another great reason for folks to consider STARS for their precious dollars. And we know it's not easy now. So we don't, as, as you, as Dave, as I'm sure you would agree, we take none of this for granted. Uh, people are, there's some folks going through some very, very difficult times and, and they maybe supported stars in the past. And if they can't this time, we just say, thank you and God bless. We hope things get better for everyone. But to the extent people have some, a little bit of room where we're really, really uh, hopeful they'll consider stars again. Well, th thank you, Brad, uh, as usual. Your perspective is extremely insightful, and uh, in awarding you the 2021 uh, PSAC Stars and Spurs Honorary Patron, uh, we know that it's been a team, and we appreciate your leadership of, of that team, bringing stars to Saskatchewan. 
promoting the essential role of oil and gas in the Canadian economy and in our local communities and continuing to do so. And uh, you have a long uh, career uh, in, in, uh, in your uh, retirement to continue sharing those messages and we really appreciate your work doing that. And uh, as I said earlier, I think your accomplishments and, and your, uh, your, uh, your, your work for STARS and for this energy industry uh, are uh, unparalleled and, and uh, we appreciate all of your support. So thank you, great catching up and uh, look forward to, to seeing you again soon. And as always, uh, uh, everyone stay safe and, uh, and, and thank you again. Just before we go, Dave, thanks to you and PSAC. Thanks for reaching out to me to, for this uh, and for the honor uh, of it, but also to the, to, the, uh, to the association for their constant support of STARS. Uh, and on a, on, on a final hopeful note, I believe with all my heart there's going to be CFL football next year. So let's end this on the, on the prop, in the proper way and say, go Riders. Exactly. And... Uh... I, I can't uh, I, I can't express that uh, any more than, than you can. Uh, uh, being a, well, uh, a season roots, ticket holder by, by family, I, your, your roots run deep. You're, yes, that, I'm not sure folk, is, many folks. No, I think your father was very much involved, was he not? Yes, he still uh, has the season tickets, and uh, and he invites uh, my kids to to go with him uh, when we're visiting, and uh, we try and and uh, time our vacations uh, for a home game and look forward to everything being better uh, 12 months from now. And, uh, and uh, thank you for all of your words and, and, and your support. Thanks very much. Thanks.